Welcome back to the first video of two about trimming my Proxon BFB 2000 drill mill stand and my Proxon BFW 40E spindle. In this first part we will concentrate on the drill mill stand. I already did a video about setting up and aligning the whole stack here. Card here, link in the description. However, I think I can do a little bit better precision wise on the trimming side. As a first step, I made this collar here for the 43 millimeter <coughs> spindle clamp so I can attach my dial gauge here to the whole setup. Uh, card here, link in the description. And now let's get started. Enjoy! The goal here is to get the z-axis as perpendicular as possible to the table. So I neither want uh, the axis to be on an angle in this direction along the x-axis nor in this direction here along the y-axis. The tilt around the x-axis is obviously adjustable here, so that shouldn't be a problem. The real problem on that particular drill mill stand is the tilt to the y-axis of the table, because yeah, it depends on how perpendicular your column is and how much error is included in the whole head here. So we will have to improvise a little bit. The first order of the day is to adjust these ways here. I think I was a little bit lazy <laughs> when I adjusted them the last time, uh, but we will see. Before we start, I should make sure that I'm not running here my dial gauge into the table when I go all the way down. So I might have to put the dial gauge a little bit higher up and also adjust the height of the head. I'm back in a minute. I adjusted everything and I also clamped my Brent's banking new square here onto the table as a reference surface. Uh, it was in a mailbag card here, link in the description. And now without even zooming in, you probably see the first problem if I go down now. Yeah. <clears throat> we are out here quite a bit and I cannot go down all the way, can I? Oh yes, 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 there's enough space. I can go down all the way. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a catastrophe. But the important thing I wanted to show you, if I lock my z-axis here, I get a deflection. And that's an absolute no-go. That means there is too much play here in the ways. So we have to tighten the two set screws that control the play of the ways a little bit. Not too much, I mean it should still <laughs> move easily. So let's try that. Now I have so much tension here in the way that it's almost, almost not uh, returning to zero just from the pressure of the return spring. I don't think we can <sighs> tighten it anymore. Let's try that one more time. A tight. Yeah, there is still a deflection, but it's yeah, three hundreds. Eh. Eh. And if I'm all the way down, it's almost nothing. 
That's good. That's good. But three hundreds uh, when we are on the top is a little bit much. Okay, I played a little bit around with it and we are at the top of the way. And if I lock it now, we're about two and a half hundreds. And I can't get it any better because if I tighten the screws, any of the set screws anymore, there will be simply too much friction in the whole thing and it won't move anymore. I mean, there's so much friction in here now that the return spring really doesn't work anymore. Uh, but I don't really care about that. I care about precision. And if I'm all the way down, we have now also a deflection of, yeah, maybe two hundreds. Okay. So I have to live with that. You might have noticed that I'm not really happy from the tone of my voice of the 200th deflection here when locking the ways. However, let's talk about the elephant in the room now. If I go here all the way down, that's about 70 millimeters. We have a deflection of, yeah, 0 0.25 millimeters. And that is, by all accounts, uh, completely unacceptable. Just so that we are on the same page, the dial is pressed in as I go down. So our arrow, our z-axis is leaning that way. So we have to correct that and rotate it a little bit clockwise. To do that, we just have to loosen uh, two screws here. There's one on the other side of the head at the back. And then we can, as it's designed, uh, rotate the whole assembly. Uh, yeah. Uh, the trick is not to really completely loosen these screws, but just to, yeah, release the pressure that we can slowly but surely <clears throat> hammer the whole thing into the right position. So I loosened the screws at the back a bit. I still cannot rotate the head here. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, deflect here, of course, everything, but I cannot really turn it by hand, but I should be able, let's see, we're at zero here. It's a little bit small, I know. Uh, protect that back, and if I whack that here, and that's the best place to whack it with something hot, soft, then, ah, oh, let's see. Three hundredths. Oh, let's go a little bit further. Five hundredths. Okay. Now let's see if that really improved things or if I was just <laughs> telling nonsense. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was that? I don't know, but... That looks much better. I mean, there's still a lot of deflection in here and uh, I will find you now. I don't think uh, you need to see that. Uh, I come back to you when I'm finished and then we have a look. It's about uh, over half an hour later and I learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> about the BFB 2000 from Proxon and that is after you adjusted the tilt of the head and you are fastening the screws here that hold the head in the place in the back again uh, you innovatively at least with that screw on that side on my machine uh, you increase the error again <laughs> so while you're adjusting, you have to overcompensate because when I fasten, at least at my machine, 
that screw here on that side in the back, it will pull the head back again into the arrow direction. Uh, yeah, the mileage on your machine might vary. But in the end, I think we got a very good result. Okay, you see, it's a little arrow, but as I go down, the arrow vanishing, vanishes a little bit, then we have a little arrow in the other direction. So yeah, it's, it's again, uh, plus minus a few hundred. Uh, but in the end, uh, that's what you can expect from such a light <coughs> drill mill stand. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now let's see how much my z-axis is leaning here towards the y-axis and at what angle. Uh, fair warning, there's not much you can do about that, but I'll show you the only way I found in case we are not here on spot. So let's see what's happening when we're going down. Oh, that looks very nice. Uh, 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 do I see a little deflection there? Yeah. Okay, I'm deflecting here <laughs> the whole column, but uh, yeah, we are probably within five hundreds. Let's see if we can get back to zero at the top. Yeah. It's really interesting because we're measuring here also the deflection of the whole column as I apply here a little bit of force. Okay, and I'm crashing here somewhere. I feel it. Yeah, at the end of the way. Yeah. Then it stays here and Yeah, to be honest, I think this is all deflection and um, I don't think I can improve on that because I mean, yeah, five hundreds, it's not ideal, but um, it's hard to correct that error without any additional modification on the machine. You might think you can shim something here between the column and the base on one side or the other to make it lean a little bit more back or forward. Uh, but you don't get anything in here. Believe me, I tried it uh, in the previous video, not the previous video, you know, the video where I aligned that whole stack for the first time. I already carded it, link in the description. I can't even fit a tin foil in here, no way. So the only method of slightly influencing the lean of the column are these two set screws here at the base. If you have a little bit more pressure on the upper set screw, the column will lean forward. If you have a little bit more pressure on the lower set screw, the column will lean a little bit backward. And that's it. And it's very limited. I thought about drilling here a third hole in the middle and then have a third set screw yeah from the inside so i really have a pivot point where i can pivot the whole column around but uh i don't really think it's worth it uh, considering how much the whole setup is deflecting under force anyway just to show you what I mean that the steel column is deflecting under forces, under loads here on the head, uh, try to have a look at the dial. 
and I'm trying to apply some forces here. Yeah, so I can deflect that easily a tenth of a millimeter. <clears throat> okay, um, that steel column is hollow. It has a wall thickness of 2.5 millimeters and an inner diameter of a little bit below 40 millimeters. So yeah, you could probably stiffen that whole column by <clears throat> putting something in like a secondary steel column uh, with a 39.5 millimeter outer diameter and then gluing that in with uh, epoxy or whatever. But uh, that's in the future, if I get really desperate with that thing. That's it for today. <laughs> Next time we will of course put the spindle in and then tram the spindle itself because that spindle clamp is all not <laughs> also not the most precise. But before that <laughs> there might be another small project uh, like the one where I make that part here because I need a way to attach my dial gauge to the spindle. Anyway, till then, bye!